for our person of interest and today we are going to the senator uh, who is the senator of Kiambu uh, County will be talking to Kimani Wamatangi uh, shortly but just to tell you this morning as well at uh, parliament we have our Ian Wafula who will be talking to you later on towards the end of the show there will be a meeting between members of parliament national assembly and uh, the executive I understand cabinet secretaries they're having a round table breakfast so it's coming up we'll be talking to Ian to help us understand what the agenda uh, for that meeting is um, that will be happening later on this morning and we'll be covering it live for you here on ktn so do stand by for that time for person of interest senator karibu sana Asante. it's Thank good you. to see you same here yeah you. It's good to see you. so Sorry. many people here as kimani wamatangi yes. but that uh, was not originally you were not born kimani wamatangi yes i wasn't i wasn't i was born uh paul kimani mm -hmm. uh but somewhere from 2004 yes uh, i was a businessman for quite a while that was about about 16 years, 16 years ago, I started my business. In 2004, I embarked on a community project. In my county, Kiambu, we have a big area called uh, Ndeya. Yes, where, I where, yes, where we have a lot of uh, water shortage problems. It is actually an arid area. We've been petitioning government for a long time to gazette and declare that area an arid area so that those people can also start benefiting like the people of Trukana and uh, Moyale and other places. Right. And so after visiting the place in my work, community work, I saw the problems that those people are having. Mm -hmm. I started then a project for them to help them uh, have safe clean water storage facilities. Uh, th that essentially started, I paid a visit there one time and um, I went to a family. That family, the mother of the home wanted to make me a cup of tea and she had to, de to, to send a child with a donkey and a cart mm. to the river to fetch water for me and my group to have a cup of tea. Wow. And um, you know, when, when that happened, I took interest. She introduced me to a women group that they, they were having, about 70 women. And they were each contributing 20, 30, 50 shillings each every month so that they could manage to build a water tank uh, for each member of the group. And this water tank was being constructed the way you construct a house, with building stones. Mm. Uh, the cost of, was, of course, enormous, about 70,000 shillings per, you know, per tank. And for about almost 68 women, that would take uh, a long, long time. Yes. So they had just done about two for the entire group. And so after taking keen interest on what they were doing, I thought I could help those people and help that community. And so I started my project, uh, I introduced a bit of CSR from my company and uh, I got into a good arrangement with one of the manufacturers whom we teamed up with after that and we made available to the communities there water tanks at probably a quarter of the amount that that women group was spending yeah. to have safe water cleaning facilities for them. And we shortened that time to only a day. So, I mean, we were able to get them a water tank of their yes. size, delivered it to them. And so once we started that, uh, we expanded it to churches, to children's homes, to poor families, uh, and other public institutions, including youth groups. Yes. And the whole project exploded. And so... So how many were you able to put up? Roughly. Very many. As of today, yeah. as of today, we have uh, donated more than 20,000 tanks. Wow. All over. Yeah. You, see, you see, the project exploded beyond Kiambu mm -hmm. and uh, now into the entire country. And so as I, would, as I would go around the community, people would be asking, who is that man that was here? Oh, and, and, and they would say, it's Kemani. Which Kemani? They would say, that one of tanks. You know, in, 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 Kiku, <laughs> in, in, in Kikuyu, that yes. one of tanks translates into Wamatangi. Wamatangi. Okay. And, so, and so that's how the name Wamatangi came to be. Uh -huh. And uh, I couldn't uh, anymore. Uh, and it's also where your political ambition was born at the same time? Uh, yes, yeah. my political ambitions uh, matured later after the project. Okay. Almost um, eight years later, uh, so when we were starting the project, it had nothing to do with the politics, but it certainly helped us, you know, in getting known because we are part of the community. Yes. And uh, since then, it's been a name I'm proud to wear because 
as of today, we still continue with our mission. We have expanded the project to the entire country. We have tanks in Northeastern, in Ukambani, in uh, Masai land, in Western Kenya, and in Kiambu, right. especially, uh, to make sure that uh, we can also help our people get especially what they want in yeah. the state of Florida. So you officially had to change your name? Yes, I had to. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I ran for member of parliament for Kikuyu in 2007. And the people had such enormous goodwill to elect me. Mm -hmm. But by then I had not changed my name. Ah. And so when, when they came to the ballot box, they would be saying, we want to elect Wamatangi. Yeah. And they would be told, we don't have Wamatangi on the ballot oh box. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> on the ballot paper. And uh, so I had to change my name into Wamatangi. Mm -hmm. uh, but more than the politics, like I've said, I'm happier and prouder to wear that name for what it stands for and for the mission that I know we also stand for, for the community and the, for the people of this republic. Awesome. So there's Thank more you. to our name. Yes, there is there more, is to, more our name. to our name. And <laughs> yeah. I want to invite you, as you watch this this morning, to call in and engage uh, with the Senator Campbell County. You've heard his story at least about where, where Matangi came from. Uh, but we now want to get into politics. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, when the Migori incident happened, you were among those legislators that came out to condemn what yes. happened there. <coughs> uh, but since then, we've had several other incidents. And yeah. it's political intolerance that we're seeing just getting to heights that are worrying. Yeah. Um, that politics yeah. reignited and it's all this referendum yeah. and it's across the board both uh, divides are to blame for this because it's not just one side yeah. do you agree that politicians are largely playing up this and then at the end of the day it's a citizenry that have been left to um, go up against each other uh, yes and no, and no. Uh, yes I would say largely because I believe uh, that uh, we must, as a nation and as people, as politicians, consciously punctuate ourselves to rise to a higher level of, of political maturity. Um, uh, you saw the incidents that we saw, like you've said, from Migori, and from Migori, uh, word has it around uh, that uh, indeed it were politicians who were sponsoring those young people to carry out such acts. Uh, you've said correctly that we have had such incidents uh, in other areas. We had an incident in Nandi and the latest uh, movie in, uh, in Makueni. Yeah, and we'll talk about that, yes. And, and, and you know, it is unbelievable that, um, uh, that after having a new constitution, after more than 50 hours of independence, that, that some politicians would want to go that way. I believe there are very small section of politicians but they have a large influence on the way our people think on the political side of the country and uh, it is my firm belief that that needs to be corrected because uh, we can go that way and the way to correct that is to take action is to take action, farm action, mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, against the people who perpetrate that. For, For example, what would you say about the Nakuru situation, where the governor there has said Nakuru is a no referendum zone, and we've seen material, the books are being used to collect the signatures for Kwa Kenya, being banned? Well, probably the governor was doing the right thing the wrong way. If you How ask me. is it the right thing when you cut that space? I, 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 I'll tell you why, why I say so. Looking at the political mix of Nakuru, mm -hmm. the population mix within Nakuru is as volatile. And you remember when we had the 2007-2008 post-election chaos. Yes. Uh, Nakuru is, is, is the melting uh, pot of, of cultures, tribes, and, uh, and, and, and clans and groups. Mm. The politics of that county have been, for quite a while, very sensitive. Can you remember the times when we had uh, uh, a politician who had said cut fingers of people who, 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 who wave a finger? Remember during uh, the Nyanya era? And then again, during the post-election violence, uh, that was where the real action was. Maybe the governor was looking at a situation whereby the introduction of collecting of signatures would again strain uh, the political temperature. 
But I would say, I would say this. But isn't it but, an action what he's training yeah. at? Because, sir, just to stop you on that, you say it's a sensitive area, then he should come and approach every situation with that appreciation because then when you come for those who'd want to support it and say, oh, this is a region that we're not talking referendum, we want nothing to do with the referendum. And yet it's a democratic country. People should be able to decide what it is they want. Well, you know, the work of a leader is to show direction so you can't you can't sit in the in, in the backyard and say okay fine we are a democratic country so you move the way you want it is important to share direction but i think what i would advise the governor of nakuru is yes it is okay for him to show direction to his people because he is the elected leader in as far as he thinks that uh, he is able to contain and control his people to con to retain the temperatures and the political agreement that is there but in collecting the books and uh, burning them and uh, probably publicizing or agitating, maybe that he could tone down with the people. But largely, I agree. And uh, if you look at, for example, because we've singled so out... what do you agree if, be, with? Because if you single out, if you single out Nakuru, we may miss out on the bigger picture. Which is what? In every area. For example, let me give you an example. In um, areas of Taita Taveta in the coast, Matters of land are sensitive matters. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if a politician goes there and tries to fan up and agitate the issues of land and matters of land carelessly, then you can start off a political uh, whirlpool that you cannot be able to control. Now, in a place like Nakuru, and that's why I said, to a certain extent, I would agree with the governor but disagree with him maybe in, with the means. I would agree with him on the mission that it is important not to stir up political temperatures. And needless how to say... How is it stirring up political temperatures when Okoa Kenya are collecting their signatures? To those who want to sign, how is that stirring up political... Because, because when in the course of them collecting the signatures, you don't control what they tell the people to control... Tem uh, the, 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 why should that when they're collecting, controlled? When they're collecting signatures, I'll tell you why. You have largely seen the kind of rallies that the core group are holding and let me bring you but none of you have moved to just, court all we hear is those accusations that yes inflammatory remarks have been made but no recourse let, 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 let me let, let, let me let, let me bring you a little fast forward on okay. on, on some real uh, cases for example yesterday in uh, a rally that uh, was held in uh, kwale by the Okoa kenya group you had some of them Leader is standing up in front of pub public, and one of the leaders was saying, Wali wanyanganya mashamba, wali fanya nini. But now, when you start telling people that in this country, when you know that surely we have issues, historical, uh, political, that have never been fully settled, just like any other country, not uniquely so, if you pick on what you think are the issues, of those people and star them and rub their emotions the wrong way intending to attain a particular means then you will not be soliciting for signatures. But isn't that the same thing that's happening in the Jubilee House? We saw what happened in Narok with the, especially just with URP, the National Assembly Majority Leader against uh, Isaac Ruto coming out publicly even using words that many said, you know, was unnecessary and perhaps not no, no, right no, no, no. to speak and touch on his mother when talking about funds. It's across the board. No, it isn't across. Uh, uh, if, if you look at the incident between the governor of Ahmed and the majority leader mm -hmm. uh, it was it was really a matter of an exchange between the two on an issue that is largely national because i think what the majority leader was there was is national I, I'll, I'll tell you why what i mean what the majority leader was trying to address at that particular time although the choice of words is what you would pick an issue with is a matter of importance to everybody. That is accountability. What I was trying to address was the matter and issue of accountability mm -hmm. to every public officer. Then that, 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 that goes uh, without challenge. Every public of officer must be ready to be held accountable. So you're so, saying, before we move, go to that situation, before we leave Nakuru, that on Nakuru, the governor is right to say that Nakuru is a referendum-free zone and people should not entertain any referendum talk or campaigns there? I, I, I'm, I'm saying that, that, that 
that he is a right to guide his people according to his interpretation as an elected leader so on the what guidance? the situation is on ground. So the because you see, he has chosen it to is, take. It, it is easier. It is easier, Sophia, for us to comment from outside when we are not in there. He knows things probably that we don't know. And, and you know, I, I'll tell you what. I was very active and alive during the 2007-2008 uh, political violence in this country. Mm -hmm. And it just took little actions from few people in particular areas to start off a whole inferno. And this country went down. I was right. out. And, and so, if as leaders we don't take responsibility, and sometimes as a leader you must make hard choices. You don't always make choices that are popular. The times when you have to take choices because you know that this choice is going to be the right choice for the people so you at this particular time. I would not fault him on advising that if you come to start collecting signatures and saying the kind of things you've been saying around the country and looking for sensitive issues to whip up so that then you can attract the people's sympathy, then you would be doing the wrong thing. And in that case, then he is right. You see, I fault entirely the COD team and their core team because if indeed they fronted their agenda and said to the people of the country, this is our mission. Mm -hmm. We want to collect signatures, but it is your choice without either incitement, inducement of opinion, or including tilting of what facts are to make sure that, 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 that you whip up uh, political em emotions. Did you hear, Sophia, yesterday, no, the day before yesterday, a national leader in the core group saying to, to, to the whole country that they're intending to introduce a system of a quota system in public employment what based on tribes. Excuse me, Sophia. Let's what, take a call what, from what, what, Wangeshi what? before we continue and we'll talk more about that. Wangeshi sure. is calling us from Eldoret. Wangeshi, good morning. How are you? Hi. Um, Thanks hi. for calling. Go ahead with your contribution. Wangashi? What you bring, for what you bring to the people. Mm -hmm. And I want to let him know that we are also trying to acquire Kenya in better ways. Yeah, I like the way he's trying to acquire Kenya. I remember we have a woman uh, group here in Andorra, and we had tried to get a tank for the women in prison. Mm -hmm. After we realized that they have a very short, uh, big shortage of water, mm -hmm. they have an issue. Mm -hmm. And he came through and gave us a tank. So I would like to ask the other leaders and tell them that just like he's doing it, we look more small ways. Let us Okwa Kenya mm -hmm. save me. Yeah, I believe that instead of going around talking about Okwa Kenya, we should do it in action. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Angeshi. So Angeshi applauding some of your work with the uh, tanks. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, saying that I, we I, should I, see more leaders coming out to Okwa Kenya literally with actions. No. Let's take another call. Uh, Dan, good morning. Good morning, Sophia. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for calling. Uh, now, yeah, I want to say this, Sophia. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the thing is that it's trying to be sincere. Yes. I'm trying to understand. Uh, Hello? Mm -hmm. what? Hello? Yes. Sophia, I'm trying to, to, to get to understand the difference between Governor Mbukwa of Nakuru. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any, and, 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 and the people who are throwing a uh, chair at the president in Migori. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kind of party that we see coming out hello i think we're having a problem with that we've lost that call um hopefully dan you can call back would love to hear uh from you trying to just draw for us what you think is a parallel or not between the incident in migori and what's happening in nakuru but uh, yeah so senator there's uh, wangeshi there who is saying some good work with the tanks and we need more leaders are coming out to that because when you hear what is being said even recently when the president was telling the governors in Jubilee to toe the line, you know, and if they're not going to uh, toe the line, then they should go out. You get a sense that for most people, it is this approach, uh, which is rather sometimes antagonistic, that is then trickling down to everybody because Jubilee will point fingers at court when they throw out their members or threaten discipline uh, against some of their own because of not agreeing um, with positions they've taken. And the other way 
around. But it's that kind of approach when it's really not about issues down at the ground. It's so much of politics and speaking at each other, not to each other. But we have Dan back on the line uh, before you respond to that. Dan, good morning. Good morning, Sophia. How are you? I'm great. Go ahead with your contribution. Now, uh, actually, I wanted to say I'm getting it difficult yes. to actually understand the difference between Governor Bubwa and the people who are throwing chairs in the body mm -hmm. and the behavior of the majority leader in the neighborhood in, 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 in Duale. Actually, this kind of behavior is an behavior that used to exist in the 18th century. And only we hear the governor trying, the, 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 the senators trying to defend the governor and the conduct of trying to say that people should not, their poor Kenya should not go to Nakuru. I think this is the impunity of the highest order. Because you see, this country belongs to Kenya. It belongs to everybody. Whether the senator you have in studio, whether Raira, whether the president, it belongs to all of us. And if you have a political activity that you want to do any part of this country, I don't see the reason anyone needs to stop you from doing it. Mm. Because one thing that has to be clear, uh, Sophia, Sophia, to the Senator, uh, the, the, the issue of the referendum is a constitutional right. And therefore, I don't see the government, why the government should spend a lot of time discussing a, a, a referendum at the cost of Kenyan suffering, especially when we find it difficult because the cost of living is up there, Sophia. I mean, these are the issues we intend to see this government addressing. The very, very many issues they told us that they are coming into power to address have not been addressed. They told us it's like a digital government. Look at the kind of stuff that they are giving to people. It's a sham. As you go and see most people are moving around the country discussing the referendum, when I know very well that this government collects uh, taxes from every Kenyan, whether you voted for Jubilee, whether you voted for God, they are collecting taxes from us. And we expect them to, to, to actually work for us. All and right. the work of the opposition, the rulers, the Sophie, mm -hmm. has to be, to be clear to the Senate, is to keep this government on toll. And if they cannot be able to tell us what they've been able to do in the last one year, I mean, it, it's apparent that they, 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 they've been defeated to totally perform. All right, the work Dan, thank you. Them to do. Dan, your point is made. Thank you very much for watching and for calling this yeah. morning. Mm -hmm. So two things that he brings out, that it is hard to even just separate the behavior of the residents, some of them in Migori, and what you're seeing the majority leader National Assembly doing, and what the governor in Akuru is doing. He describes it as the highest level of intolerance. Uh, well, I, th I think uh, Dan is uh, very passionate about, about, about what he's talking about. And so are many Kenyans. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like and um, uh, uh, probably w w one point that, that he's made that is um, right is he says that this country belongs to all of us and uh, every one of us constitutionally has a right to be able to go to each any part of this country and mingle and uh, express themselves that is true it's constitutional but there is a line between what you say in public in exercising of your right and what that amounts to and how it affects the rest of the, the republic and the rest of the people. Because, you see, you cannot claim your, your rights in exclusion and say that it is my right to go to Nakuru, it is my right to go and uh, address people there and say whatever you like. I agree. The Akoa team can go to Nakuru, but if they go to Nakuru, they must go to Nakuru to say the right things. They what must, are the right things? They, they, who determines what is right? Because your right the constitution. will be their wrong. It is the constitution. Their wrong might be it is right. the laws. It is the laws of the land that determine what is right and what is wrong. Beca if yeah. if they if they go to Nakuru, and they have an edict, a script of what they want to say to the people, but that is lawful, that that is also punctuated by responsibility, that they know that what they say, the things they'll be expressing the political persuasion they will try to take to the people does not incite those people, then they have a right. But, but you can't tell me that you have a right to come to my home because uh, you know, you, you, you're from my, 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 my family. And then when you come to my home, you want to come and incite my wife. To leave my but home. how have they incited the people there? They are simply coming with what their push is and what changes I they was, want I was, to make. I, to but I was just in the process of actually uh, giving you and the people of this republic real live cases that this team have gone around the entire country trying to set brother against brother, like tribe what? against tribe. And I, and, 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 and I started the incident, for example, like the one that, that was in uh, Mombasa yesterday in Kuala 
where one of them was standing up and saying how what waliwaibia mashamba mwingine anasimama and he said that uh, the first president was or whatever the so that that president and now the fourth president was, i mean for goodness sake you can imagine a national leader narrowing and scaling and sieving everything that he's got down to tribe only to be able to stand up in front of the entire nation and say this man is this tribe this one was that tribe we cannot afford that brand of politics and if you tell me that that is the agenda of Okoa Kenya to come to my area in Kiambu to come and tell people how to hate the people in Western Kenya or how to to, to re but are they not raising legitimate concerns in as far as some public uh, of uh, service spaces where they've asked for more inclusivity that are then occupied they, they, they don't only yeah. by certain communities. No, no, I'll tell you what, then they don't deserve to be leaders. They don't deserve to lead this country at but, all. And because the leadership about that inc inclusivity? Leadership is about being responsible. Leadership is about being a niche above the rest so that you can be able to stand up like I said earlier for tough choices even when they're not popular tell people the truth even though at that particular time you don't think it's gonna earn you votes or points now if for a long time we have come up with the agenda with a new constitution with commissions like the cohesion commission only to make sure that we wipe out of the psyche of the people and the mentality of our people that indeed we are Kenyans and we can no longer continue to view ourselves as that tribe or that woman or that clan and that is the only agenda that these people have got to take around uh, around the country and you see for example tell me who is the responsibility if a leader of the Okoa group stands in public and tells the people irresponsibly i believe that we want now to start a system whereby the administration police are going to be under governors and what are you saying why is that irresponsible well, 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 because that is not only irresponsible but but for a leader it is naive it is absolutely naive it why is because someone would look at it this way security has been a huge problem in the country perhaps there needs to be the county government needs to have some of that management at that level to help thank out with the situation because Th it has been a huge problem thank you we, 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 we came into power it's one of the biggest issues you're dealing with me and you just mentioned uh, the incident in makweni a few minutes ago mm -hmm. and tell me if a section of the administration police in makweni were under the governor and another section of the regular police were free. And there are bodyguards from the GSU who are guarding those people. You would have had an all-out scale war. I mean, you know, but are we, you we, we, we must, we, 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 we must, we, the people of Kenya or to a governor. No, no, you, you see, we, we, there, there, there are things that we must say honestly to our people, that this we can do, this we can do, this we can devolve, this. But if you look at what you think touches on the emotion of the people to try and, and, and show the people that, that, that you are thinking and agitating for them, for what's popular, then you're losing it. You see, that, that, that issue about, about placing the, the, the police under the county government, two, their call, the one that they made the day before yesterday, that we want to introduce a quota system in hiring of public servants. Tell me, why would you take meritocracy? I mean, if, if you are to hire people in this, in, in, in this organization, for example, in, uh, in, in uh, KTN, and you said that it is a rule that for every single person who comes in here, we're introducing this quota system. And you know how you operate now. Yes, there is a balance. There is a, a reflection of, of our national representation that is true in every institution. But you cannot say that you want to go and legislate and 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 pop out popularity knowing that it is not uh, practical why is it not practical because when, the approach comes from a place and is informed uh, by the constitution has the, uh, the the element of ethnic inclusivity and balance across the board if that is not working with the mechanisms we have now why not have that quota system no, no, to no. allow for fairness to force that fairness but but, but sophia who says it is not working it is it, it, it's only not working when you the look at it when you look at it from the lens from the lens of the Okoa 
and Talk group. to me about the top leadership in security right now. Uh, well, I mean, uh, what do you want here? Uh, in terms of the leadership and the composition, ethnic representation, because that is one of the areas they've pointed out, security and finance. Talk to me about the top leadership in security. In, in security, yes. they, 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 they spoke about uh, the, the, the existence of... Uh, and the position held by David Kimayo as the Inspector General of Police. And that there are only pretty much two tribes that don't and, and And I want to remind you that now, out of all those people who are sitting in office in the security dockets, other than the leader of uh, the, 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 the head of the, of the military, all other names pass through the required system by the Constitution. They pass through Parliament. They are vetted by Parliament. And put in position or in, in, uh, given those jobs by the public service after going through that system. So why would one be questioning? And, and you see, the sooner we get out of this mentality, the better. You know, I, I find it completely... So then what is uh, wrong uh, with having those quarters yeah. if you say, yes, they passed through those systems, but it is still a wrong at the end? You, you see, so if you have this quarter, then, as I said, it forces a balance where there isn't one at the moment. You, you, see, you, you, you see, Sophie, you see, Sophie, let me, let me say this to you in absolute honesty. If I ever came to look for employment from you, and the first thing you ask me is, what is my middle name? I would rather you don't give me that job. So you feel that is the direction be, be, it will take? Be, because uh, we, had, we had a major incident, you remember, the other day, during a press conference with uh, some of that Okoa team group, and one of the national leaders telling a young journalist that your middle name betrays you. Now, how does that feel? And, and, that, is, and that is largely the mentality that they have. That, that, that Stoke, stoke emotions in the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, rub them where you think that it rubs the wrong way. And then you, 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 you have the people not thinking rightly, but, but, but you have people becoming emotional. And, and that's what I'm saying, that that call to introduce a quota system is supposed to insinuate something. It's not supposed to help the people. And, and that's something that we, we, we must put uh, in the backyard of our thinking as a country now. Okay. Um, before we cross over to the National Assembly, I understand uh, we're about to begin that uh, breakfast round table. But going forward, what do you think needs to happen? Because from both sides, where each side is taking a hard stance, hard position, and some of what is being communicated and said in these rallies does not help the situation, does not help taking Kenya back to the dirty politics, to what we've been seeing, you know, um, a lot of intolerance in the political scene. What has to happen? Uh, I think the first thing that has to happen is the realization uh, within a particular political class of people that there is a time to accept results and fit as it is and let the country move forward. But, but just a, a small group of politicians cannot say that at any cost we must be in political leadership, that we must be in the forefront, mm -hmm. that even if this country burns down, Whatever we have to do, even if we have to, to lie or distort facts, then we have to make sure that we remain relevant. And that's what's happening. I mean, the entire court group and the court team know that indeed right now it is not possible for us to have a referendum, that it is not even uh, agreeable among the Kenyan people. It is not even feasible to have a referendum. That is your because Many would argue otherwise, Senator. Be, be, be because of the timelines, mm -hmm. I mean, as you, as, as, as you know, now we're in, in 2014. Yes. If they start collecting the signatures like they have done, and by the time they, rat they have that ratified in the county, county assemblies and have that taken to parliament and accepted to, and we have a referendum, that would be 2016. We have an election in 2017. Mm -hmm. But their mission is very simple. Mm -hmm. Remain relevant politically. Yes. And, 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 and that's what I'm saying, that uh, as, as a country, yeah. we must have political leaders making those decisions and accepting that the choice and the verdict of Kenyans during and after an election is final until their five-year term is over. Then they can come and claim and say, you know, give us another opportunity. Okay.